continuing on with bar graph questions and examples. We have the following bar graph shows where U.S. Medicare dollars were spent in 2012. Again, this is real dollars, right? So, for example, here's outpatient prescription drugs. Here's the Medicare Advantage. Here's off other services, etc. And this is the percent of total Medicare spending altogether. So you can imagine those percentages probably shed out up to 100% in this particular instance. So is this, a gra is this graph a frequency bar graph or a relative frequency bar graph? Well, relative frequency because it's referring to percents down here. Percents, relative frequency, those are um, one and the same. So there we go, it's relative frequency. And then it says, what percentage of Medicare benefit payments are going to outpatient prescription drugs? All right, outpatient prescription drug, drugs is right here at the very top. And that is eight, nine, 10. So each, each line must be worth one because that's how, that'll make it work on the scale here. So this is eight, that's nine, 10, 11, and 12, and so on. So I was totally getting this wrong. It's 10. I was looking at something else entirely. All right, so which category is the mode? Where is the most amount um, of spending for Medicare spending? That would be hospital inpatient services right here, okay? Which is exactly why a lot of people have argued for a while that um, one of the reasons that hospital inpatient services are so high is because people wait until they are um, in really bad shape and then they have to be admitted into um, the hospital from emergency care. All right, now, in 2012, a total of $536 billion was spent by Medicare. Approximately how much money was given to physicians by Medicare? So physicians are right here, physician payments. So that's 13% right there. So that's 13%. Now you take 0.13 and you multiply it by $536 billion. It's billion with a B as in boy. So let me just remind you of your decimal places, ones, tens, hundreds thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten million, hundred million, billion right here, the six, ten billion is the three, and hundred billion is the five. So when I grabbed a calculator, I wanted to show you what it looked like. I put 0 0.13 times 536, and then I counted out the zeros to get my billions, and it gave me an answer of 6.968E10. Again, that's scientific notation. So I'm going to have to move the decimal 10 spots over to the right. So I did that. So it was right here between the 6 and the 9, right there. And then I moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Decimal spots now there at the end of that 0. And then I put the commas in. And then, of course, just like we did the last problem at the last end of the last video, we always want to give it units. So in this case, we were talking about dollars, so we're going to give it the dollar symbol. All right, next, a Pareto chart. A Pareto chart is a bar graph, but it's a special kind of bar graph. It's a bar graph whose bars are drawn in decreasing order of either frequency or relative frequency, whichever works. So here I have the occupations with the largest job growth from 2006 to 2016, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And you can see really quickly, once it's in a Pareto chart, who's on top? Registered nurses, then retail salespersons, and so on. And you can work your way right down. These are the occupations with the largest job growth. So that doesn't necessarily mean that there's a lot of them, et cetera. It just, it just means that they're growing the fastest or growing the largest amounts. So these are the jobs added in thousands over here. All right, then why is this a Pareto chart? Well, it's a Pareto chart because the categories are listed from highest to lowest. Well, what is the advantage to that? Well, it's very easy to see the rank of the categories. You can tell who's first and which is first, second, etc. right? It's very, very quick. Now, when you look back at the Medicare one, just for a second, this is gonna take you a second. I mean, I can spot hospital inpatients number one, but who's number three? Um, okay, so I'd have to figure this one, number two, and these two are actually tied for number three, and then outpatient prescriptions, for, and you have to sit there and organize it in your head. When it's in a Pareto chart, I can spot right away, this bar here is number four, this bar right here is number three, and it's really easy to see. So it's really easy to see the rank of the categories, it's very easy to um, to select out the third category 
the fourth category, etc. Right? I can tell right away who's six. Did I just go to the sixth bar and there's number six. Whereas over here in the Medicare one, the sixth one is not the sixth bar. I'd have to fiddle around and try to figure out who's first, who's second, and so on. All right, so very easy to see order. Now, the following occupations are considered health care and service occupations. Registered nurses, home health aides, nursing aides, orderlies, and attendants. How many of these types of jobs are expected to be added by the total, to the total workforce by 2016? All right, so registered nurses is 587. And then nursing aides, I think was the next one. Oh, home health aides. Home health aides is right here. That's 384. And then nursing aides, orderlies, and attendants is this bottom one right here, 264. So if you add up those numbers, you get 587, 384, 264, that makes 1235. But remember, the unit for this is thousands, because this is thousands of jobs added. So that means that 5 is in the thousands place. So you need to put a zero in the ones, tens, and hundreds place, five goes in the thousands place, and then so on. In other words, you're moving the decimal three spots over to get you the thousand. So this would actually be a million. Now it doesn't get a dollar symbol because this isn't money, this is jobs. Alright, next we have a side-by-side -side bar graph. Now side-by-side -side bar graphs are particularly good when you want to display two or more groups and it allows you to really compare the groups side-by-side -side, as it were. So um, data sets are most often compared by using relative frequencies because different um, sample or population sizes when you make comparison using frequencies can be difficult or misleading. So here we have the physical therapists in the U.S. in 2010, again, real data, um, by ethnicity. And so you're able to compare, excuse me, physical therapists by race and ethnicity, you're able to compare the U.S. population to the number, um, the percentage of physical therapists. So let me see if, if you quite get, grasp what's going on here. So let me, let me look at the white bar, for example. So the U.S. population in 2010 was 66.9% white, right? So white people or people that would identify as white take up about 67% of the population. But there were, of the physical therapists in the US, 80% of them, 79.9% of them identify as white. Follow? Let's go to black and African-Americans. So if you look at African-Americans, there's 11.8% of the U.S. population in 2010 was African-American, but only 3.9% of physical therapists are African-American. Follow? Um, Hispanic, Latino, 14.2% um, of the U.S. population in 2010 was Hispanic or Latino, or I would identify as such, but only 4.3% of all the physical therapists would identify as Hispanic or Latino. Now explain why it makes sense that we're comparing percentages rather than raw numbers. Well, <laughs> raw numbers wouldn't do us any good here. Let me type this up one second. All right, there we go. So raw numbers would not be fair because the population numbers would be huge for all categories. I mean, there are 300 million people in the US, so every dark bar, so every um, dark colored bar, the kind of the grayish color, the dark charcoaly color, dark colored bar would be really long um, in comparison to the light gray bar. I guess I can call it dark gray because it's, it's like a charcoal color that I picked. All right. Um, since there are not that many physical therapists in the U.S., in other words, all the little PT physical therapists, PT bars, I guess I could say physical therapists, I don't want to confuse you, all the physical therapist bars oops, which are light gray would be really, really, really small. And we wouldn't really be able to see the differences. I mean, the whole idea here is to be able to compare. I mean, you can see basically the argument we're making here is that um, there comparatively are not that many black 
or African-American physical therapists or that many Hispanic Latino physical therapists. I mean, if, if Hispanic and Latinos make up 14% of the population, but they're only making up 4.3% of the physical therapists, that would mean that maybe there's a big market for Hispanic and Latino physical therapists. See? But we're not able to make those comparisons if you used raw numbers, because raw numbers would be the charcoal bars would be so large, you'd never really get to see what's going on with the little gray bars. The light gray bars, that is. Oops. All right. And then what what does this graph reveal about physical therapists? Well, which groups are overrepresented and under? It's a little bit hard with the multiple other. They're pretty much the same. And same with American or Alaskan Native. That's, that's a little bit tricky because those populations are so small. But you can see here, look at the Asian Pacific Islander. So that would be um, people of Hawaiian, Tahiti, or Tahitian descent, that kind of thing, or just Asian descent. Um, they're only 4.9% of the U.S. population, but they're 10.7% of the physical therapists. So that's an overrepresented group. Similarly, whites is over, are, are overrepresented. So they only make up about 67% of the U.S. population, but they're making up 80% of the physical therapists. Similarly, or conversely, Hispanic and Latinos are underrepresented. They're a larger population percentage, but they're not getting a lot of physical therapists. So let, let me write that up. There we go. So Asian and white ethnicities are overrepresented. So a significantly higher percentage of physical therapists are Asian and white than the population at large. Um, and then by the same token, the black and Hispanic ethnicities are underrepresented. So there's much less than we would expect. I mean, we expect around 14% of all physical therapists to be Hispanic Latino and only 4.3% of them are. All right, now last but not least, pie charts. Uh, pie chart, everybody's seen a million times. It's called also called a circle graph. And a, it's a graphical display in which a circle is divided into sectors that each represents a portion of the whole. Variables, again, are qualitative. You, can't, you can only make circle graphs like this for qualitative variables. You wanna label each of your sectors with your categories and your relative frequency slash percent. Um, and then the graph should be two-dimensional. Never draw three-dimensional anything. Um, three dimensions are bad because you're forcing perspective and it makes some sections look bigger than others. So this pie chart below shows the types of organ transplant programs in the U.S. And yes, it's real data in case you're wondering. All right, so what percentage of organ transplant programs are either heart, lung, or heart and lung? So heart is right here, 15.6. That's this section. Heart and lung together, that's 6.2, and then lung over there is 7.8. So let me add those up. There we go. All right, so I would take 15.6, oops, 15.6 plus 6.2 plus 7.8, 7.8, there we go. And I get 29.6%. Or again, you could use the decimals and then convert it to a percent either way. All right, then there are 808 transplant programs total. How many of them are pancreas or pancreas islet? So I'm gonna start off with what percentage is that? So pancreas is 16.6, pancreas islet is 2.5. So I'm gonna add the two of them up and I get 19.1%. But what's the total number? That means I'm gonna to have to multiply. So I want to know 19.1% of 808. So I'm gonna multiply. So 0.191 times 808 is 154.328. And then, of course, you can't have 0.3 of a transplant program. Either you have a transplant program or you do not. So it's got to be 154. Remember that there's rounding to make all these values in the first place. So that rounding is affecting you down here. So just round it to 154 and you've got it. And we are all done with section 2.1. I'll see you back here for more videos for section 2.2. .2.